a man, a town, in restless spirits. This is Allenport State Historic Park. I'm Mike Smith with Portable Ghost Society, and I'm standing in Allensworth State Historic Park, a small town that had big dreams. The year is 1842, and on April 7th, Alan Allensworth was born in Louisville, Kentucky, into the slavery system of the antebellum South. At the behest of his mother, Phyllis, he learned to read by their master's son, he eventually was moved through a Quaker house and then eventually sold from his Louisville estate in the mid-1850s. In that time, in his teens, he ran away several times and eventually he was sold to a man named Fred Scruggs who intended to train Allensworth to be a jockey. Then Civil War broke out and Northern forces were invading Kentucky. He escaped his slavery and joined the Union forces, becoming a nursing assistant, and eventually joining the Navy, where he served until 1865. He then owned two restaurants in St. Louis, Missouri with his brother, and studied at the Baptist Theological School in Nashville, Tennessee, becoming an ordained minister in the 1870s. After twice serving as a Republican National Convention delegate, Allensworth reached out to governmental authorities in hopes of being made a military chaplain. He succeeded and was appointed on April 1, 1886 to the 24th Infantry Regiment in Oklahoma, an African-American Buffalo Soldier Regiment in which he served for two decades. In addition to his spiritual duties, Allensworth coordinated groundbreaking educational programs for his constituency and was later sent overseas to the Philippines. After his return to the States, he was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel by the time of his retirement in 1906, making him the highest ranking African American officer of the day. Then, in 1908, Colonel Allensworth had an idea and he teamed up with other black leaders from around the country to found their own town, free of discrimination in the institutionalized racism prevalent in the eastern states of America. Soon, black farmers, ranchers, craftsmen, and business owners from around the country moved to Allensworth. Colonel Allensworth had the goal of creating the Californian equivalent of Tuskegee, Alabama, which at the time was a haven of black culture and a thriving society surrounding the Tuskegee Institute. And for a while, Allensworth truly was the Tuskegee of the West. But the town of Allensworth faced major troubles with no follow through from the Pacific Farming Company over pledged water allotments and the Santa Fe Railroad's decision to not provide a stop here at Allensworth. Then, on September 14, 1914, Colonel Allen Allensworth died after being struck by a motorcycle when he was getting off a streetcar in Los Angeles. He was there on a speaking engagement, and the mysterious nature of that incident has caused continued speculation on whether it was an accident or intentional. By the middle of the century, the town began its decline, losing most of its residents, and eventually the town was abandoned. Then, in 1974, the abandoned town was designated the Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. And today, several of its original buildings are on display, giving us a glimpse of life back then. 
But just because the town was abandoned by the living doesn't mean it is empty of inhabitants. Many visitors to the park have witnessed seeing specters walking about the roads at all hours of the day and night. The church is home to a mostly transparent man dressed in preacher's clothes, seeming to be waiting on his next sermon. In the kitchen of the Smith House, the voice of a woman can be heard speaking of food from that era. In the hotel, footsteps are heard walking up and down the hallway and doors can be seen opening and closing. And in the schoolhouse, children can be heard laughing and playing. So if you pay a visit to Allensworth and you're taking a tour, take a good look around. The person standing next to you may not be alive.